Good morning everyone. Conditions today are just absolutely fantastic for photography. Uh, low winds, plenty of water around on the ground. So for the next couple of hours I'm going to be looking for macro subjects. I found a bee <laughs> straight away. Uh, it's in a patch of reeds and there's a little bee just hanging kind of underneath. Um, so I'm going to get set up. Um, first thing is I need to get low down, I need to get to the same level and try and get the camera parallel. What I would usually do is a test shot, so I do this all the time, just get the macro lens handheld just to see how it's going to look. But I can tell from looking at this, it's just going to be fine, uh, fairly wide aperture, the background is going to be okay, uh, I've no trouble getting into position, I shouldn't have anything in the way, so I'm not even going to do a test shot. I'm just going to do a camera, I'm just going to get the camera on the tripod. So that's a quick initial setup. Um, as I'm looking at it now, there seems to be just a few more sort of stems behind it directly. Um, so I'm going to shift my position. If I shift my position slightly to the right, yeah, that's just looking a slightly clearer background. So that's all I'm going to do is move the tripod slightly to the right. That looks good. I think it's just going to benefit from lifting the shadows a little bit. So I've just got a simple here foil silver reflector. I'm just going to angle that underneath the bee and it's just to add a touch of light, just to throw a touch of light back. This is kind of the shadow area and it is low down as well, it's more in the shade. So this will just bounce a bit of light back and just lift it a little bit on this side. And what I've also done now is to rest the reflector down here. So before I was just kind of holding it because I was angling it, trying to get it in the right position to bounce the light back. And that's fine, but if you've got lots of stuff in the way, as you often will, sometimes you might disturb the vegetation. And a couple of times, if I wasn't careful, I was actually moving the vegetation and the bee was slightly moving, the stem was moving. Uh, so now resting the reflector means that I'm not touching anything and there's going to be absolutely minimal disturbance and movement. It's moving, it's moving. Uh, so this shot I've taken, it's not a super, super macro. I've not gone in really close. Um, I've composed this to include a lot of the stem, to include all the stem it's on. Now what I'm gonna do is move in to fill the frame much more for a real macro image. Um, I've gone in closer now. I didn't have to go much, probably on about six inches or so, maybe a bit more. Um, what I've done is actually stopped going in even further because I really like this composition where at the moment I'm just concentrating on that diagonal part of the stem that's kind of hanging down with the bee on the end. So it's just like that diagonal running into the, the top right hand corner of the frame, which I really like. So that's my composition. Um, because I've gone a bit closer, I've closed the aperture down to f6.3 because you get, you know, you get less depth of field the closer you get. So I'm a little concerned with that. Uh, I'm on ISO 800 and 1 60th of a second at the moment. <clears throat> now I'm actually fo focusing with live view, and I think this is ideal if you can do this for macro photography. It's fantastic. You really need to be on a tripod in this kind of situation. Um, 
with macro photography your focus is, is so critical any slight movement of focus can make a real difference to your resulting image This is photo number three now, so it's not unusual I'll do this, I'll do a wider shot and then go in a bit closer and then try and take a real macro shot if I've got time to do that. Uh, the difference now is the lights change, more sun's coming through, there's actually some sun coming through from behind that camera, uh, it's just starting to strike the bee a little bit, it's giving a little more, more contrast, so I've got to be aware of that. I've put the reflector, uh, I've opened it up more because I feel like I need to bounce more light back. There's more contrast, so the shadows are darker, so I'm trying to throw a little bit more light back into those shadows. There's a lot of contrast now, so I'm finding it's difficult to throw enough light back into the shadows with the reflector, even when the reflector's really close. So what I'm going to do is give this a go which is just a small LED. This is a, a new Lanzi LED, small light, and that can just, uh, again, throw a bit of light into the shadow areas. Now, I did do a video on this. I'll try and put a link on the screen. Uh, I did a video using this in slightly different situations and showing you how you can use it in the field for macro photography. Let's give this a go. Geese flying over. I was intending to photograph more subjects today because the conditions were just so perfect for macro photography, but that bee just ended up taking all my time. Uh, I think if you do macro photography properly, then it is really time consuming. And if you're trying to film and do B-roll, then obviously it takes much longer than that. I do hope these tips have been useful, these tips and techniques. Uh, if you're in a similar situation with your macro photography, and I can't believe how much it's warmed up, how warm it's got and how bright it's got. That bee's actually gone now, so the bee's off. It's off within an hour of me being here, and I was here for about 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then click subscribe for similar videos and in-depth tutorials as well. And just remember, it's always good in life to, to just be. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.